Shalom, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so recently when we talked about the the eclipse, and uh, I, this this is amazing. You got you got to see this video. Okay, so during the eclipse, I was telling you guys that um, you know, and, and a solar eclipse only only takes a few minutes to take place, and so I had posed this question over many years of what was blocking out the sun during the crucifixion of Yeshua. And lo and behold, this, and I gotta tell you, this is the first time I've ever seen anybody else pose the same question. And this guy goes and produces all of the historical records that prove what I've been telling you guys, that something else blocked out the sun during the crucifixion. It was not the moon. It was not the moon. The moon does not block out the sun for three hours. And by the way, it, there's there's many historical records of what took place on that day, and from Chinese records to Egyptian records to Roman records, that we can see that it, this was something that was not normal. Right. And it took place and it caught the people off guard. It was not it was not something that was calculated by the astronomical calendar. OK, so please watch this presentation by this this channel. I'm going to debut here in this mirror and I would encourage you to go and subscribe. These guys are locked on. I don't know where they got this information, but it's a confirmation of what I've been telling you. And I'm thankful for him. So let, let's watch this video together. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour, because the sun was obscured. Because the sun was obscured. And the veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, Father, Father into your hands I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. This record is dated 31 AD, and it's in the history of the latter Han Dynasty, and there's the reference. The imperial edict reads, Yin and Yang have mistakenly switched, and the sun and the moon were eclipsed. The sins of all the people are now on one man. Pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. They knew nothing about Jesus, and this is dated 31 AD. They knew nothing about Jesus Christ, but in their soul, in their spirit, they felt 
that this sudden eclipse of the sun unexpectedly meant that the sins of people were pardoned and had been placed on one man. That's amazing, isn't it? And then it goes on to say, the eclipse on the day of Gwihai, man from heaven died. How did the Chinese people know this? There in China, Jesus Christ was being crucified in Jerusalem. They knew nothing about it. But in their records, when they saw this eclipse, these imperial astronomers wrote, man from heaven has died. There is still some debate over whether this darkness was supernatural or simply an eclipse. Interestingly, the Greek pagan historian Thallus confirms the biblical account that darkness totally covered the land at the time of the Passover in the year we now call AD 32. Now, Thallus published this information only 20 years after the resurrection of Christ. While this is a powerful extra-biblical historical confirmation of what happened that day, he believed this darkness to be a result of a solar eclipse. Thallus, however, was no astronomer. A North African Christian leader by the name of Julius Africanus mentions Thallus in his writings in AD 215. Julius says, This darkness Thallus calls, as appears to me without reason, an eclipse of the sun. For the Hebrews celebrate the Passover on the 14th day, according to the moon, and the passion of our Savior falls on the day before the Passover. But an eclipse of the sun takes place only when the moon comes under the sun. Any astronomer will tell you the same thing. A natural solar eclipse was not possible on the day of Christ's crucifixion. You guys, and I've said this over and over again, for a solar eclipse to happen at Passover time is an astronomical anomaly. If anything, you can have a blood moon, by the way, and you will see in this presentation that that also happened. It's impossible to have a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse in the same 24-hour period. What does this mean? This means that some foreign object blotted out the sun for three hours, and then that night, there was also a blood moon that took place. This would have stood out to all of those who were witnesses as a sign. This would not have been normal. It would not be predicted by Kepler's law of planetary motion. Okay? This would have been un unexpected. Think about that. Look at the histor historical records here. This account of Jesus' death in Luke 23 leaves us wondering what exactly caused this darkness. Can this darkness be explained astronomically, or was it a completely supernatural event? Jumping immediately into an astronomical explanation would lead us to suspect a solar eclipse. While an eclipse of the sun may seem to make the most sense, it does not line up with the timing of Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus was crucified at the time of the Passover when the moon was in its full phase. Since the moon was at the exact opposite side of its orbit, a solar eclipse would not be possible. There is also another problem with the solar eclipse theory. The Bible says that the darkness lasted three hours, but the maximum time that the sun can be eclipsed is only eight minutes. Since this concept of having darkness while the sun is still shining cannot be explained astronomically, we can come to the conclusion that's no moon. One of those weird stories is the darkness that happened during Jesus' crucifixion, which is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Here's Mark's account. He writes, And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And we're not even sure what the darkness was. Was it a solar eclipse or some other natural or supernatural occurrence? Tertullian, writing in 197 AD, says this event also was in the Roman archives. Maybe he was referring to Thallus' writings. It's a very interesting question. Tertullian wrote, In the same hour too, the light of day was withdrawn, when the sun at that very time was in his meridian blaze. Those who were not aware that this had been predicted about Christ no doubt thought it was an eclipse. You yourselves have the account of the world portent still in your archives. Tertullian does mention Thallus by name in the same work in his Apologies. It takes a lot of guts or a lot of stupidity to challenge skeptics to look into the archives to corroborate this event if it didn't happen. For these reasons, it seems more probable than not that Thallus' comment can be taken as the earliest evidence that we have for Jesus outside of the New Testament. And it's an early confirmation of something that happened during Jesus' crucifixion. For skeptics not to give this evidence some mention seems a little too convenient if you ask me. One of the first historians of this period, 
Rufinus of Aquilia, as a part of the work he completed on Eusebius's ecclesiastical history, contains a section that describes a defense given to Maximus by Lucian of Antioch before his death by martyrdom in 312 AD. This Roman writer was quite certain that the darkness described by the Gospels that is said to have happened at the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth was a part of the historical record of the Roman archives. Search your writings and you shall find that in Pilate's time, when Christ suffered, the sun was suddenly withdrawn and darkness followed. Roman historian Rufinus of Aquilia. All right, so we just saw Chinese and Roman historians recording this event that took place that they could not explain. It was not an object called the moon that passed between the, the sun and the earth. It was something else. It was unexpected. It was not It was not something who, that could be calculated. And so this was something that stood out. Rufinus would never have asked the Romans to search their records for the account of the darkness if it didn't happen. This statement not only confirms the New Testament account that darkness occurred at Jesus' crucifixion, but also serves as proof that documents other than the Bible exist in the records of antiquity, which describe the crucifixion of a man called the Christ. During the reign of Tiberius Caesar, a second century record from Phlegon of Tralles describes a complete solar eclipse that happened during the time of the full moon, exactly as the gospels record from the sixth to the ninth hour. In the fourth year of the 202nd Olympiad, there was a great eclipse of the sun, greater than had ever been known before. For at the sixth hour, the day was changed into night and the stars were seen in the heavens. An earthquake occurred in Bithynia and overthrew a great part of the city of Nicaea, Phlegon of Tralles, the extant fragments of the Olympiads of Phlegon. Though often contested among scholars, Pontius Pilate is alleged to have sent the following report to Tiberius, Emperor of Rome. And when he had been crucified, there was darkness over the whole earth, the sun having been completely hidden and the heaven appearing dark, so that the stars appeared, but had at the same time their brightness darkened, as I suppose your reverence is not ignorant of, because in all the world they lighted lamps from the sixth hour until evening. And the moon, being like blood, did not shine the whole night, and yet she happened to be at the full. Pontius Pilate to Tiberius in a bid. The moon being like blood would indicate a lunar eclipse was happening simultaneously you guys, as the sun. We just saw Tiberius Pilate, the pilot of the time, telling you that there was something that happened, and then there was a blood moon that happened at then. There's, there's no way. Research that. There's no way you can have a solar eclipse and a blood moon in a, in a 24 hour period. Something else happened. The sun was darkened, a claim that is attested to by other historians at the time, such as Phlegon. But regardless if these words were written by the eyewitness of Pilate, the descriptions of the sun being hidden or obscured during the time of the full moon phase isn't unique to that document. Jesus voluntarily gave himself over to the passion, but through the impiety of the Jews, was apprehended and nailed to the cross, as a very great earthquake took place throughout the world. Rocks upon mountains were split, and a great many parts of the largest cities fell by this extraordinary violence. On the same day also, at the sixth hour of the day, the sun was entirely obscured and a loathsome night suddenly overshadowed the land, as it was said, an impious age feared eternal night. Moreover, it was quite clear that neither the moon nor the clouds stood in the way of the light of the sun. So it is reported that on that day the moon, being 14 days old, with the entire region of the heavens thrown in between, was farthest from the sight of the sun. The stars throughout the entire sky shone, then in the hours of the day, or rather on that terrible night. To this, not only the authority of the Holy Gospels attest, but even some books of the Greeks. Christian historian Paulus Orosius. 
Dionysius the Areopagite remains one of the most enigmatic figures of the early Christianity. He was a Greek author, Christian theologian, and Neoplatonic philosopher of the late 5th to early 6th century. The Dionysian writings were given great authority among subsequent theological writings in both the East and the West. He describes his first-hand account of the sun's darkening during Christ's crucifixion as follows. How, for instance, when we were staying in Heliopolis on a certain sixth day, and about the sixth hour, the sun, to our great surprise, became obscured through the moon passing over it, not because it is a god, but because a creature of God, when its very true light was setting, could not bear to shine. For when the whole orb had been throughout darkened by a black mist of darkness, and the sun's disk had begun again to be purged and to shine anew, then taking the table of Philip Aridaeus and contemplating the orbs of heaven, we learned what was otherwise well known, that an eclipse of the sun could not, at that time, occur. Next, we observed that the moon approached the sun from the east and intercepted its rays until it covered the whole, whereas at other times it used to approach from the west. Further also, we noted that when it had reached the extreme edge of the sun and had covered the whole orb, that it then went back towards the east, although that was a time which called neither for the presence of the moon nor for the conjunction of the sun. Now, I ask you, how is that mathematically impossible? Uh, possible? How is that even possible that this happened? Can you can you imagine being being there on that day, and the Kepler's laws of planetary motion are are something that can, it can be calculated. They knew when eclipses would happen and things like this, and they can see that it was not the moon. Hear me. I've been telling you for a couple of years, it was not the moon that blotted out the sun. It was something else. The Jews call it Nibiru. Some will call it Planet X. The Bible in Book of Revelation calls it Wormwood. Something has happened over and over again in our history that's had an effect on our Earth. And it's not done yet. It's not done yet, you guys. That's the point of this. I, I'm excited to see that West Blaze, and that's the channel. We're gonna we're gonna put that down in the description. Go and subscribe there. Has produced the information that I've been telling you, the historical account. That means they've been studying, they've been looking, searching, and 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 finding the information that proves what I've told you. I therefore. O treasury of manifold learning, since I was incapable of understanding so great a mystery, thus address thee. What thinkest thou of this thing, O Apollophanes, mirror of learning? Of what mysteries do these unaccustomed portents appear to you to be indications? Thou then, with inspired lips, rather than with speech of human voice, these are, O excellent Dionysius, thou saidst, changes of things divine. Dionysius, the Areopagite. According to this report, an object that could be mistaken for the moon eclipsed the face of the sun on the day Christ was crucified. However, it was confirmed that it could not have been the moon. Let's examine some of the other observations Dionysius recorded. Next, we observed that the moon approached the sun from the east and intercepted its rays until it covered the whole whereas at other times it used to approach from the west. In this excerpt, the author mentions that the solar eclipses they were accustomed to would present a shadow which would move from west to east, where...
here's a lens glare that is not anything in the sky but check out what shows up do you see that I'm gonna slow it down zoom in so you can get a better look at it right there now super slow motion look at that I didn't think too much of it okay right there it goes again until I saw the next one so this is the first one that showed up in the video of the sun. These are obviously different formats that I've always done. Here we go, a much bigger one. Check this out. Whoa, it went way too fast, right? I'm gonna slow it down so you can see it again. Slow motion here, check it out. What in the world was that thing? That thing was huge. Watch, look at that. Big old huge semi-transparent orb. There it goes again. Watch. This isn't, there it goes right there. A huge, I'm talking massive semi transparent orb. There it goes again. Those were all just different formats. I tried to pull it forward, but it was very difficult, almost impossible to see. I obviously didn't see it because I wasn't looking at the sun. I don't know what that is. I, I, I have no idea, but it showed up before that did. Look at that. Look at that thing. Massive, semi-transparent orb. There's another good look at it. And it's affecting the way my camera is managing the light of the sun. See that? Isn't that weird? There you go. More mysteries in the sky above planet Earth. Thanks for the photo. Here's a lens glare. That is not anything in the sky. But check out what shows up. Do you see that? I'm going to slow it down, zoom in so you can get a better look at it right there. Now super slow motion. Look at that. I didn't think too much of it. Okay, right there it goes again. Until I saw the next one. So this is the first one that showed up in the video of the sun. These are obviously different formats that I've always done. Here we go, a much bigger one. Check this out. Whoa, it went way too fast, right? I'm gonna slow it down so you can see it again. Slow motion here, check it out. What in the world was that thing? That thing was huge. Watch, look at that. Big old huge semi-transparent orb. There it goes again. Watch. This isn't, there it goes, right there. A huge, I'm talking massive semi-transparent orb. There it goes again. Those were all just different formats. I tried to pull it forward, but it was very difficult, almost impossible to see. I obviously didn't see it because I wasn't looking at the sun. I don't know what that is. I, I, I have no idea, but it showed up before that did. Look at that. Look at that thing. Massive, semi-transparent orb. There's another good look at it. And it's affecting the way my camera is managing the light of the sun. See that? Isn't that weird? There you go. More mysteries in the sky above planet Earth. Thanks for the photo.
Boa noite pessoal, Sorocaba Estrela vermelha no céu de novo, grande Sentido nordeste Em direção a leste, mas muito devagar É bem grandona Super vermelha, tinha aparecido há uns 15 dias atrás, agora voltou Ela aparece de vez em quando no céu More breaking news this morning here on CB24 Breakfast. This from the Bridal Path area, where a police investigation is underway at Drake's home. Chopper 24 is above the scene this morning. It shows the street shut down just outside of 21 Park Lane Circle. That property belongs to the rapper. Crime scene tape can not only be seen outside, but also in the front courtyard driveway of Drake's home. It's not clear at this point what the nature of the investigation is. It's also unclear if this is connected to an overnight shooting that police have told us about in the uh, area where shots rang out. This is in the Bayview and Lawrence Avenue area, which is in the sort of general area of Drake's home. So this is just after 2 o'clock this morning. In this case, one person taken to hospital with serious injuries. Investigators say the suspects left the area in a vehicle. Once again, no official word from police. If there is a connection, we are working on that. We have our Courtney Hills making her way now to this scene. Again, Drake's home. Police investigating will have much more throughout the morning mm -hmm. here on CP24.